last week, uh, Father Mark launched the St. Mary's game plan. And, uh, and he gave a beautiful homily about the importance of worship, which is the center, the center of what we're doing here at St. Mary's as a family, as a community, but also hopefully as individuals. Okay? We're having this praise of the Lord. And, uh, and he used this, uh, we're, we're using this uh, baseball uh, analogy, uh, I guess because a lot of people love sports, even though baseball is not too famous here uh, in Canada, it's more famous in the States, but we have one major league baseball team, which is the Toronto Blue Jays. How many of you here are Blue Jays fans? Okay, I'm a Blue Jays fan too. When I was uh, assigned in Toronto, I was able to watch a couple of uh, Blue Jays games. And, uh, and we know there's a lot of like die hard Blue Jays fans, right? That, that's one of it in the picture there. Die hard Blue Jays fans. Uh, but even though a person is a die hard Blue Jays fan, there's still a difference between being just a spectator and a player, right? As if, if you're a die hard fan, a spectator, if the, the team loses, you'll feel bad, right? You want your team to win. But if you're a player, if you are a player, if your team keeps on losing and you're not playing well, that's, you, you could lose your career. You could lose your job, right? That's why players, I could say, are more invested. Players are more engaged. Players are more focused on the game plan, which is to win, and not just the game, but hopefully to win the championship. And spectators are not so much. The question that we have to ask ourselves is that as we're doing this St. Mary's game plan, are we just a spectator or are we a player playing the game? Fully engaged, fully invested, fully focused in carrying out the game plan. And uh, so we use this, uh, this was uh, done by our uh, media guys, beautiful there. Uh, so last week, uh, uh, Father Mark talked about the centrality of worship. And today, we, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the importance of uh, community, which is knowing Christ. Next week, uh, Father Mark will be talking about uh, discipleship, which is growing in Christ. The following week, I will be talking about ministry, which is serve Christ. And lastly, Father Mark uh, will talk about evangelization, which is to share Christ. Okay? And, uh, and it's, hopefully this is an easy thing to remember, right? We only have to remember five, five pillars. Worship, community, discipleship, ministry, and evangelization. And as I've said, if you are a player, where are you in the game plan? Okay? And in a baseball game, uh, many people think that the most important base is the home base, right? Because it's in the home base where you score. Am I correct? Yes. But what is the second most important base? What's the mo second most important base? Huh? The first base. No, we're talking about offense here. Okay? What's the second most important base? The first base, right? Because if you don't go to the first base, you won't get any chance. You won't get any chance to score. That's why it's so crucial for players to go to the first base. Of course, it's so important. It, it's, it's best to do a home run. But for most players, they want to go to the fir first base. And that's, uh, and that's community, the importance of community. How many of you here have watched the Chosen series? So in the Chosen series, you see how Jesus is living in community with his disciples, where they're, where they're sharing meals, where, they're, uh, where, the, where the Lord is teaching them about, you know, the, the things about God. And it's in that context of community, okay? When he sent them out, he sent them out two by two, 
not just one, right? He sent them out two by two. So they're kind of li living in community. And for Je because Jesus, for Jesus, there's no such thing as a lone ranger Christians. The reason behind that is because we, we are created in the image and likeness of God. What is the image of God? God is a communion of three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're living in community. That's why we, it, I highly encourage you that we need to be in community because that's what we're created for. We're created to be in communion with God and with each other, okay? And in, 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 in community, of course, uh, the community as a whole is, of course, being a parishioner here at St. Mary's, but there's also particular communities, like the small Christian communities, the youth group, the young adults group, and etc. How many of you here are part of the small Christian communities here? Okay, so I encourage those uh, to be in a small Christian community. We have Jeff and Linda Schultz here, who are the leaders of uh, the, the small Christian uh, communities here. And it's so important to be in a community. Uh, what are the factors of being in a community? Of course, meeting together regularly, either every week, every two weeks, or once a month. You come together to worship the Lord. You also come to, uh, together to get to know Christ maybe doing a Bible study. That's also an environment where you share. You share your ups and downs. And lastly, to get the support that you need. In community, that's where we get the support, we get the encouragement, but also that's where we're being challenged. Right? So that's the importance of a community. And in a community, the very first thing that a person should feel when they join a community is a sense of belonging. And unfortunately, in so many churches, that's not happening. In so many churches, it must be that you must change your behavior first, then you must believe, and then after that, you can belong. But Jesus did not do that, right? In our gospel today, we saw Jesus sharing a meal with tax collectors, sinners, and prostitutes. Jesus let them feel that they belong, that they're loved for who they are, that they experience His mercy. And by that, they would believe, believe, not believe in His love, believe in His mercy, and also believe that He is the Son of God. And when after believing, that's where the behavior would start to change. In our gospel there, uh, the, 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 the Pharisees and, and, and the scribes, they were scandalized. I'd like to share something with you and see if you're going to be scandalized, okay? I got this from the internet, and the title of that, uh, uh, of the, of that article is Go to Church Anyway, okay? If you're having sex before marriage, go to church anyway. If you're a drug addict, trying to beat addiction, go to church anyway. If you were out drunk all night the night before, go to church anyway. If you aren't sure about your gender, go to church anyway. If you can't quit that disgusting habit, go to church anyway. If these people come, the question that we have to ask ourselves, are we ready to welcome them? Will they feel welcome when they come? Or they will feel that they're being judged. They're being labeled as great sinners, that God could not forgive their sins. Are we ready? Are we ready to welcome them? Or are they going to feel that we're going to manipulate them and control them and change them before they could belong to this church or this small community? That's the question that we have to ourselves. Right? It's belong, believe, and behave. And, and it, we, we saw that in, 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 in our gospel today when Jesus shared about the parable of the prodigal son. It's a beautiful parable. 
Okay? You, you, know, you know this parable very well, right? When the father saw from the distance his son coming back, what did he do? He ran. He ran. He embraced the son and kissed the son even before the son repented. It's not after hearing his confession and repentance, then the father hugged and kissed the son. The father hugged and kissed the son even before he repented. When these people will come to our church, to our small communities, are they going to experience the father's heart to us? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. In our second reading today, it's so beautiful. St. Paul, a holy man, considered, considers himself as the greatest of all sinners. And as he experienced that mercy, he is able to share that mercy to others. And hopefully that should be our outlook about ourselves. We are great sinners. We are in need of the mercy of God. And as we experience the mercy of God, we're able to share that mercy to our brothers and sisters who are coming. Okay? I'd like to use this analogy of uh, a winter campfire. Of course, if, if it's the, the height of summer, if it's too hot, nobody's going to make a campfire, right? It's during the time when it's cold that people would make a campfire, especially during winter. I've been doing winter camping. We need a winter campfire there. And this analogy, I hope you will remember. 50, 60 years ago, or 70 years ago, or more than that, the spiritual climate then is still very warm. A lot of people are going to church. A lot of people are practicing their faith. And I could say there's more love back then. But right now, what's happening? What's the spiritual climate right now? Because of secularization, where God is being pushed out, right? where there's material, uh, society being so materialistic, where money and possessions are our priority right now. More and more what's happening is that the spiritual climate becomes colder and colder and colder because there's going to be less and less love that we're experiencing. That's why in this campfire, the more lives that you put together, the stronger and the, and, and, and the more long-lasting the heat will be. This is a great analogy of why. Why we need to be in a community. Okay, if, if you put, if you, if the log is by itself, yes, you started the fire, it will just go off quickly. But if you put the more logs together, as I've said, the heat will be stronger and long-lasting. Okay? I would like, to, uh, and, and, and that's, and, and a, a classic example of that is in the Acts of the Apostles in the early church. The early church in the Acts of the Apostles, they made the habit of meeting together, eating together, and worshiping together. And as a result, the Lord added to their number daily to those who are being saved. And a scripture passage that I want you to remember is from Hebrews, okay? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, okay? And going back again to the baseball analogy, as I've said, the second most important base is the first base, which is community. So I really hope, you know, uh, that, that you could be in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a community where, where you, you, you have this sense of belonging, that you are loved for who you are, okay? That you get the support that you need. As I said, we're living in a very spiritual, cold climate right now. The culture right now, as you could see, is becoming more and more hostile to the Christian values. And don't be surprised if there will be more and more persecution. That's why it's so important to be in a community 
because it's not going to be easy. What we're going what, what, what to experience in the near future, or maybe now, it's not going to be easy. We need to get all the support that we need. On our own, it's going to be difficult. Okay? In a community, as I said, we get the support what we need, the encouragement, but also that we are being challenged. So that even though there's trials, there's difficulties, there's persecution, we will be able to persevere to the very end. Mm -hmm.